You're live. We're live. So pop into the stream on the YouTube and the Facebook. Thanks, everybody. Just wanted to post that really quick. Today, the first guest, the best guest I could possibly ever hope for, Kevin McGee. Hey. How's it going, man? What's up? How are you? I'm well, man. Brad Yeager. I, I am uh, I'm happy, to, <laughs> happy to be here on the bus. This, You know, this bus, I couldn't have had a more fitting first guest for this podcast because on this bus, how many stories do we have? Countless. My God. Yeah. Uh, we go back for sure. There's history on this here vehicle. <laughs> this here vehicle. <laughs> What is it, uh, 80 or 1990? Or what? what is this? Feels like yesterday. It's an 89 we Bought this GMC. in parking lot in Jersey. <laughs> Here we are. I wouldn't have it any other way, man. <laughs> but, uh, so, let's, uh, let's cut to the chase here. Like, what has been going on? I haven't seen you in the better part of a year, man. Like, you have been yeah. up to some stuff and some things. Yeah. Um... Well, let's see. Broad story. We were in the climbing. Yes. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, that was, like, the best time. It was, like, so full of passion and everything. It was and a then, good time for sure for me as well. And then I really was... Um, that whole side of my life that involved yoga and Reiki and healing was like underlying it the whole time and i think even when i when we lived together you saw that i was like meditating every morning yeah absolutely and i did it with you a couple of times yeah i don't like waking <laughs> up early though so i didn't get to participate as much but the more the time's going on the more i've kind of like just <laughs> flown in that direction mm -hmm. um so the last two years it's really been getting into doing music therapeutically in nursing homes and that was what it was and I still do that now yeah um, you think you were mentioning that that's like your Saturday ritual every Saturday yeah you go out and you play you, you do you do multiple ones or is it kind of just one that you stick to um it's mainly one that I stick to there's one nursing home in particular I go there every Saturday and the story was I I got an engineering job and like two and a half months in, and I was like, this ain't for me. It was like, it was the same thing as the first engineering job. It was mm -hmm. just the same corporate crap that I just couldn't, wasn't, didn't fit into. Yeah. And I finally admitted it and I just like laid it out to my boss. Yes. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm not cut was, out for this. He was super kind about it though. Yeah. It was actually really awesome. And then right after that, I told that particular nursing home um, that I would start a music program there because they were saying that they needed that and I, I happened to be there a couple times for hospice care. Yeah. And they were like, oh my God, like we always wanted a music program person but nobody will ever do it. Mm. So I... Did you get paid <laughs> for this at all? Or it's just something you kind of no. just decided to do? And that's crazy, man, yeah. that you just decided like this, this is something that's needed yeah. And I know that I can provide this need. Like, that's beautiful that you, like, decided to just go out and do it, man. That's what it was like, too, because I quit that job, mm -hmm. respectfully. But I was like, just, this isn't me. And then when I did that, I just knew it's like, there's no going back now. It's like, I made this decision, like, I'm going to go in the direction that, like, actually uses my gifts and, like, actually like does the things that I know will like help people and make me happy yeah so that was why I originally was like I will run a music program here really what that ended up being was I went there every day for two hours and played piano mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and tried to get paid and they tried to pay me but it just it never worked out like that yeah um so as that went on at some point, I realized that I had to do something where I would actually be able to make a living. Yeah. Because at first, I thought, I'm just going to do this, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to make it happen, 
and I did, but I didn't get paid. Yeah. And they couldn't pay me. And I, yeah. Like, I, I didn't want to be, like, that person. Yeah, that like, kind of, like... It'd take away, like, the purity of it. Yeah. So, that was when things kind of changed and thought about teaching. Mm-hmm. And it's like, like, I know I'm good at math. No doubt. I know I'm good at, like, talking to people. I yeah, like, you started, like, doing tutoring in the middle of there somewhere, right? Because yeah, I started tutoring, just started, like, you know, like, I know math so well just from all the classes I've taken. Yeah, no doubt. And I like teaching people. I mm-hmm. like the feeling of being around somebody and helping them and guiding them and whatever. So it's like, why not combine these two things? So really, the last two years has been, like, a delve into being a teacher. And I didn't know that that's what I'd, like, be doing at this point, but that has been, like, it's, it feels more and more like it's kind of, like, a calling of sorts at this time. Like, to actually be, like, like, the teacher in the classroom that, so the last two years has been mostly that. Um, I started in an alternative school, which was... Like, uh, like trouble, know, yeah, very like, troubled, yeah. emotionally disturbed, and that was all kinds of interesting, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. But the cool part for me was like the healing aspect, mm-hmm. and then now I'm teaching in Chester, mm-hmm. which is um, mm-hmm. kind of similar. With there's like a lot of like kids who have been through traumatic experiences, mm-hmm. um, but it's much more structured. Oh, and, at Chester, then yeah. the alternative school. Where was the alternative school? The alternative school was near Levittown, yeah, near so where it was I closer. live. Yeah. And it was... Uh, you didn't get to teach much. It was a lot of just, like, being there and trying to keep everyone calm. And, yeah. like, I was, like, a teacher, bouncer, psychologist, <laughs> whatever they need me to be yeah. kind of guy. So now I'm actually, I actually feel like a teacher, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, but back when you were doing the alternative school, do you feel like you made a good impact on those kids? Like, I feel like, just from what I know of you, I feel like uh, just having you in my life when we were in the band, I was able to really use your way of life to complement mine, and we were able to really, you know, make this amazing band that did so much like i have yet to get into another project that has gone as far as that yeah uh, that in my opinion um i felt similar too yeah i don't like if we're talking about bands i don't think i'll ever have another band yeah that was just our band yeah and it was like it was like that it was like we just complimented each other Mm -hmm. and it was really cool yeah like we had like that gel yeah but but yes um, for the kids that I went into it with that mindset mm-hmm. and it was clearly for me like a very important thing mm-hmm. and it wasn't just like all right here's my next job yeah I'm in here making this much money teaching these kids because a lot of people believe it or not teach for those reasons <laughs> yeah I believe and, it and it's crazy because you like when I think of a teacher I think of someone that like yo this individual is raising our youth they are a like huge vessel in that kid's life to move them on like i can think of you know countless teachers that i've had in my day where like i still think of them to this day like without that person's teachings i wouldn't be the positive influence that i am today that i I mean i think i'm a pretty positive influence on people Yeah. yeah but yeah exactly it's like you're the role model mm-hmm. like you're the person they're around the most you're the person who will have the most influence really yeah especially because um, like i'm thinking like in those troubled schools a lot of them probably i mean you can probably say yes or no on this like they don't have a father figure in their life so they yeah. kind of look to their teachers as that you know yeah that, like, that's definitely a thing that is 100 percent right mm-hmm. um especially the father figure um that's especially in the chester right now too yeah but, at the alternative school too it wasn't just father figure it's like their parents might not even be around at all yeah they might be living in a foster home like they would kind of look to the adults in that building as like this is this is just what you got yeah um which i think led to a lot of the chaos in there because like 
that's that's a lot of stress for a kid no doubt to like you don't really have anyone um so it's like all laid out in that building yeah um but i definitely went into it and i even on day one like i you sit down the first day in there and like i'm terrified i'm like oh my god like i don't even know if i can do this yeah like you're sitting around and, like these kids just look like it's scary thugs to you yeah to me and i'm yeah. like like i had no confidence as being a teacher mm -hmm. i'm like see how this goes so like first day i was just like what am i gonna do to like really show them that i'm like here for real and i just like i just opened myself up like and just told them honestly about my life like mistakes i've made like things i've done wrong like and just i tried to do that the whole year to just be that like vulnerable person do you think that um, was like a really good way to leverage like your influence on them i do because a lot of times what happens is um people will be afraid to really like open up to those kids mm -hmm. but when you do it's like that's they're so craving that and then like i think they would feel better about their own life and mistakes and like no like there is like i can move forward from where i am because mm -hmm. here's this person who said oh yeah i once fell back in my life too but now i'm here so i think definitely that like guiding presence that i brought into it made a huge difference yeah and the response from them showed that too because after a while like i could tell like some significant impacts were made mm -hmm. in ways that were like you don't always see there yeah because sometimes the kids just kind of get written off as like like all right just just get through the day with that kid yeah oh he's a pain in the butt um so i think there was some kids who knew like like i was willing to kind of be that person to actually sit with them mm -hmm. and see the good in them yeah so didn't yeah. you uh didn't you uh use some alternative methods to get to them too like i remember before like a, a while ago <laughs> like a while ago you told me they found out about our band yeah. and the bus <laughs> so um yeah it was i was i mean half of it <laughs> half of it is i didn't know what the hell i was doing <laughs> the other half is i it was like yeah it's unconventional but yeah i like th i showed them like our music video i, I yeah, told them about our LA. band yeah i'm like look guys i was in a band <laughs> can you believe cool. that but oh. it, it worked though like that stuff yeah. like dude i really think kids today just want to know you're human mm -hmm. and they want to feel like you're in it with them. Mm -hmm. That's really it beyond like your level of certification or professionalism. Um, it just seems like that more and more yeah. with kids today, especially. Um, but yeah, I did all kinds of weird stuff. Like the biggest thing that I was different was different with me than with other teachers was like, I did not like, lay down the law to them at all like i did not like demand anything of them mm -hmm. and it was so confusing yeah <laughs> like everyone else in that school just was so like on point with all these rules and how yeah. to do it and everything and like i'm like clueless i don't even know anything about this yeah. stuff but even if i would have known i wouldn't have done it yeah and i i had this kind of like attitude of like all right you just cursed all right and it was confusing <laughs> as heck for them and after a while they like i think started to realize like like that's cool like kevin like, mcgee's I'm, that's the, mr mcgee's real like yeah <laughs> no, it's like i'm great that you curse but i'm more interested in um your abilities so are you done cursing like yeah. so that's kind of what i was like trying to do mm -hmm. and it definitely led to some freaking some chaos in my room no no doubt and uh questions about me but uh, over time like i think everyone knew like what i'm trying to do so yeah but i definitely used like 
like I would tell them about all kinds of stuff in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I would do like musical things every once in a while. Most of all, like I would just be more open with them, I think, than a typical teacher would be. Yeah. Like I sometimes it would almost seem like I wasn't the teacher in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, which could be bad, but could be good. Yeah. Because sometimes that would help them to kind of, like, learn how to lead themselves. Mm -hmm. Which is what I think I was really trying to do. I probably didn't do a great job of it the first year, but that's, like, I think what I was hoping to do was to, like, take the step back and just kind of let them, like, uh, see their own qualities kind of thing. Yeah. And now you're at Chester. Yeah, so now... Who are you teaching? Like, what are the age groups that you're teaching? High school. Oh, man. That's, yeah. a, that's a jump. Yeah. Well, the other school was middle school and high school. Oh, wow, okay. But... Man, they, they didn't even give you, like, the elementary school, like, chance. They're like, yep, <laughs> rush him right into the deep end here. He's built, like, a linebacker. Uh, he can handle it. <laughs> it's funny you say that, because that's actually what it's been like. Yeah. My whole, like career change has just been a big mess and it hasn't been done right at yeah. all <laughs> but it's worked you know yeah. like i didn't do student teaching i don't have like the typical certification mm-hmm. i just kind of jumped in the deep end and it's like we'll see what happens and mm-hmm. for someone like me it's better that way because it allowed me to find my own way yeah not the way that everyone it's expects it to be yeah so um but that in Chester... It's not for everybody, though, right? Like, no, yeah, yeah, it's... it It is, like, so much harder than it looks. No doubt. I There was a... There was a TED Talk I saw that said... Um, teaching in urban youth, in particular, has a 50% um, retention rate. And that's, like, the lowest retention rate of any job except for like military special ops programs Mm -hmm. so it's like it's so not for everybody and so many people will go into it um and they're just it's just like that it's it's demanding it's a lot of like mental emotional stuff you gotta deal with but yeah but yeah that school it's like High school, I do tenth and twelfth right now. Mm-hmm. It's like geometry. You just teach. You just okay. Pre calculus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you teach like advanced, or are you like more on like the standard general ed kind of group of kids? Like, what are the what are the demographics of the kids that you're teaching? It in this particular school, it's kind of they're all together. Okay. There's not necessarily like honors average below, mm-hmm. so. In, is there a reason they did it that way? I don't know. I don't really. Was think it like that so. when you were in school? Because I remember there no, was like no, advanced, yeah. accelerated, I mean, and then like well, general, and then like is this like this is a charter days? school, so I know it's a little I don't different. Even know how that works? I never really. I don't even know that much stuff. how it works. I just yeah. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just there. <laughs> but it's about yeah, my pay grade kind of thing. It's not as separated as if it was. It would actually probably help, mm-hmm. but really, it's like. Like, for example, in the 12th grade pre-calculus class, there's 27 seniors. And there's, like, eight of them that were probably, like, honors level. Like, everything I teach, they, like, know it already. Mm -hmm. And then there's, like, ten who are, like, kind of, sort of fuzzy. And then there's, like, five who literally just don't do anything. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And they're, like, you know. So it's, like, a huge... Are they, like, troublemakers, or are they more, like, loners? Eh... More like they just don't do school. Yeah, it's just not their thing. Ditch yeah. diggers. No, I'm just kidding. They just, they just, they just don't do school. They don't, they don't do a lot of. They don't really. They never really did the work. You know. Yeah. So. Um, not necessarily bad kids, but just like this. Exactly. Isn't, this yeah. isn't their fit. Like yeah. they know, like this is beyond me. Like they're probably already thinking about what they're gonna do after school. Yeah. You know, and it's not gonna be this. Mm-hmm. And I usually respect that. Yeah. I don't like demand them to follow like my rules or anything yeah um but yeah it's definitely that yeah do you have conversations with them about that though i do yeah 
like just to get like an idea maybe like i see like you're not into the schoolwork as much but where can i help you like it seems like maybe you know this isn't a good fit for you but do you have an idea where you're going like are you going to join the military maybe like i have yeah. some friends that have done that maybe mm-hmm. i can like you know give you some guidance on that yeah that's actually the best part of the job for me yeah. is to have those conversations like to like take the hat of the teacher off and just mm-hmm. talk to them yeah <laughs> that's what i really like doing yeah so that does happen fairly often mm-hmm. um yeah like i'm probably more into that than i am teaching math like i'm good at math so i can teach it but i'm more into that like restorative aspect of the job mm-hmm. and like like let, let, let's help guide you to where you want to be kind of thing yeah like i that's my favorite part yeah that's math awesome. is the math it's yeah just, the math is the math i just happen to know the freaking pythagorean theorem so mm-hmm. yeah that's funny that's powerful stuff so after the climbing what did you end up doing what was that band called oh totem yeah pole. low um, totem that was it low right? totem low totem yeah. what happened with that man you're playing bass for them what yeah. a waste of your piano skills my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was that was a weird story um yeah they they needed a bass player and like they the bass player they had had like a serious problem mm-hmm. um like and like, they're good friends of mine yeah. they went to high school with them yeah and like he ended up in jail or something mm-hmm. and then like my friend nick kept asking me if i would want to be involved in the band and i kept saying no and i kept saying no because i was like pretty like on that train i was on of like mm-hmm. healing and music therapy i'm like no more yeah. bands no yeah more bands. it's not my fit especially after the climbing it's yeah just, it's like how just, am i gonna top that yeah exactly we, you know we had so much like passion in that mm-hmm. that was like that was like the band for me mm-hmm. Um, so I kept saying no, and then their bass player ended up in jail or something. So then he's like, can I at least ask you a favor? Can you at least play one show with us yeah. on the bass? You'll get paid kind of thing. I was like, talk to you in. guess I can't say no. Yeah. A year later. Yeah. So I just hung out with them for a while, really. And it was fun. Yeah. It was all originals. I mean... All covers. All covers, yeah. yeah. So it was just like all kinds of stuff. Um you know, bass is fun. No doubt. It's kind of like that thing I just have in the corner. And it's like someone needs someone to play bass. I can be yeah, like, you, I'll do it. You come out, pull, put the mask on. Like, ah, Batman's got to come out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd much Super rather play the piano. Mm-hmm. But bass is fun. Yeah, so, no doubt. So, yeah, I spent like a year with them. Did some cool things. Played in some weddings. Yeah. Um, Those pay well, right? Yeah. But then, it was really when, when I started the job at the alternative school is when I quit. And I, oh, I yeah. laid it out to them like way prior. Like, mm-hmm. don't look at me as like a full time committed person to yeah. this band because like, like I have like all these things going on. So, we had a good run and it was yeah. cool with them. But then, um, yeah, that was what ended it. But yeah, I mean. It paled in comparison to the climbing and just the yeah. stuff we did, because we rocked, man. Yeah, no doubt, man. <laughs> I was just was watching just, so many of the videos on YouTube from the YouTube channel. If you guys want to check it out, uh, Kevin's channel is youtube.com forward slash some crazy stuff. Just look up the climbing. Your Instagram handle yeah. is the underscore climbing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All the stuff's pretty much tied it's there. It's still there. Yeah. And then the Facebook page is still there, just yeah. inactive. But all that stuff's still there. All the vi- all the videos and everything. Yeah. But I thought what was so cool about that was like the way it started, because like I just moved out to Reading. Yeah, for like, a job for an engineering just, job, mechanical engineering. Yeah. yeah. But like I moved out like solo. Yeah. Like I just didn't know anything. I was. Like, <laughs> It was a weird move, really, when I look back on it. It's like two I hours away from my folks. This Let's place just do this. alone. <laughs> it's like, all right, great. And then, like, somehow moved right next to you, and then we just kicked it and just became really good friends. And then we started jamming, and then it's like, like, 
the way that band started was just the best dude it was it was, like, it was, just, it was like a, a sign from god yeah like, like how how can all the stars align that these two guys like yeah. i remember i was sitting out on my stoop because I, I just got out of work and like i gavin was like inside my son was chilling inside uh i think he was he's was probably he, he just did his homework so i said you can play video games but i need to you know play guitar because i'm terrible and i want to practice um, and then I'm out there jamming, and then you approach me, and I'm just like, oh yeah, look at this buff guy that like likes my music. I'm with this. And then you were like, yo, I have a keyboard. Do you want to like do yeah. some music stuff? And then I went over to your house. I'm like, I, like, I totally went on a whim. I'm like, oh man, this guy's gonna like beat me up and <laughs> take my stuff, or <laughs> or like he legit has all this stuff, and he's just a cool dude. And I took roll, rolled the dice on that, and here we are. Yeah, I, I, was I, later. I remember you came in. It's like. I had, like, all the CDs there. Yeah. So, like, yeah, Tool I was like, oh, and shit. Stone Temple Pilots this is, this and is stuff. Dope. You some probably, nice probably thought I was some, like, freaking, like, jackass who just says you can play keyboards. Yeah, it's dude. Like, I, no, I'm actually in the grunge. Yeah, it's like, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I did not know what to expect. I, like, you, you, you are so much different than what you look like you are. That's yes. why, that's why, like, I loved you so much. Like, I loved having you yeah. as, like, the, the other front man in the band. Because yeah. people, like, when they'd first meet you, like, Whoa, dude, this guy's the coolest thing ever. And then they, like, talk to you. They're like, he's so weird. I love this guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, he's so real. Like, I, where did this guy come from? Yeah. Yeah. So good, man. Uh, no, yeah. That is a good way to put it. Yeah. Like, so, no one ever expects what you are. And I love that, man, because it's, you're so you, like, you're this giant dude, like, you've obviously been doing a lot of the, more of the yoga, like, you used to be twice as big as me, Yeah. and, like, you, you, you're just, you couldn't hurt a fly, man. I know, and I, I, I I've been putting the weights down. Yeah. Like, that was, focusing that was on a, the yoga and stuff. That was a tough transition, actually. No doubt. I spent, like, you know, we know, we worked out together. Oh, all the time, man, it was, like, the, the ritual. But I, a I spent so much of my life in the weight room. Mm -hmm. And then, but really, like, my true persona, you're right. It's like, I'm, like, so peaceful. Yeah. I finally reached a point where I was like, why am I still, like, pounding weights? Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I've really recently been doing, like, all kinds of body weight stuff and yoga. Yeah, just and calisthenics. It's just been better. It's just been, like, that's just, like, where I'm at right now. What's your diet like? Have you ever like tried the vegan thing? I'm surprised you're not on that. Uh, it might be a slow tiptoe in that direction. Mm -hmm. Cause right now I, I eat seafood still, mm -hmm. but I don't eat meat. Oh, cool. Dude. Same. Yeah. I'm on the pescatarian diet as well. Yeah. That's cool that you're so, yes, on that. I'm when did you start so. doing that? I started doing that after I went to a, kirtan it's a yoga thing yeah in new york city and you basically you just chant for two hours and i just went on a whim mm -hmm. as i usually do with things yep. <laughs> and it just took me man and it was yeah. just awesome and um it just felt right kind of thing yeah it just it felt, felt right again. and it felt like the thing to be involved in and everybody there had a vegetarian diet and that was the day i'm like you know what fine <laughs> like, fine i won't eat steak anymore <laughs> gosh you guys God, <laughs> but i was like i'll try it you know that was yeah. that was the tipping point where i'm like i'm gonna try to change my diet and so i haven't eaten meat for the last two years um still seafood i think i did i actually signed up to get trained to teach kundalini yoga which is going to be pretty amazing but most people that do that like stick to vegetarianism so i think like i'm kind of sort of trying to like just become vegetarian mm -hmm. we'll see where that goes yeah but i'm definitely like on that path do yeah. you feel pressured that like because other people are doing it like that's why you should do it or do you feel like you see why like you see the explanation and you can fit that kind of thing like you, you understand yeah. why and you want to move toward that. Like my diet, like I'm not a hundred percent pescatarian, as you know. Like I'll eat hunted meat. Like my diet is more of an ethical thing. Like I, 
I'll eat hunted meat or freshly caught fish. I won't eat anything that's been raised in captivity. It's yeah. whole life for the sole purpose of human consumption. It just feels wrong. It just, look, we have the means to be more ethical with things. And the more people that do that, the better it'll be for everything. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. similar yeah. for me, actually. Mm -hmm. That's like, awesome. Like if, if we were like, if, if I were to, to catch an animal mm -hmm. in wherever um and it was done like you know respectfully i don't know circle of life yeah that to me um i would eat that animal like yeah. that that's kind of how i always looked at it like that process that natural process i think is kind of beautiful mm -hmm. um it's these slaughterhouses that the the, the the business of killing animals yeah, that man. is just absolutely insane to me. Mm -hmm. That's the reason that I'm doing it, I guess. It's mm -hmm. like, I just don't want to be involved in that in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. That's really why. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, if it was an animal that was caught and that was, like, it was done, like, a natural way, that to me seems, like, natural, I guess. Mm-hmm. There's tons of arguments about this. Yeah. But that's that's my stance. Yeah. Like if I was in the wild and somebody caught me, I wouldn't be that pissed off if they ate me. Yeah. <laughs> be like, so that's, you got me. Yeah. <laughs> that's my I got, outlook. Got, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty fair. Like that that's kind of the way I look at it. It's just because, you know, I'm kind of like a very nature loving guy. I just I really appreciate the cycle of life and what what it is to be like the survival of the fittest. Like I'm a it's like I'm a huge proponent of that process. Like I, I see how primal that is down to the cell. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Now we got a loud truck coming through here. <laughs> Don't worry. We're going to work on the location for the podcast. I wonder how, how much is that coming through? Uh, just a heads up, we have no audio for the first five minutes. I don't know. But it's working now? Yeah. I, I, uh, well, well, you had it muted, I guess. The mic. Oh. <laughs> and then I I'm dumb. fixed that. <laughs> and, then, and then it stopped for some reason again, so then I fixed that. But yeah, to get a full audio, you're going to have to. Did we say anything uh, important in the first five minutes? Yeah, I'm sure we did. I mean, there's back audio. Do? So yeah, we'll, yeah. Anything, so that, so we that that's a uh, that's the cool thing about it. Um, so I'm actually planning to export this to an RSS service that'll put it on like iTunes and stuff too. Um, so that'll be like the backup, so you can listen to it and you don't have to watch it on YouTube. Um, so yeah, sorry about the technical difficulties there, everybody. Um, we're still working things out. <laughs> this is a, episode one. And I know you're the only guy that wouldn't think it was a big deal if something went wrong. I'm like, oh, shit happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here on a bus. <laughs> what else do you want? <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. Um, but yes, uh, diet though is like, that is so important. Like I've been realizing as I get older how important that is, and like how much happier I'll be if I actually eat good. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely just like I've definitely been in that yogic lifestyle for like a while now. And the more I get into that, the more like all that stuff comes together. And it's like the diet, like what you put in your body is so important too. Yeah and i feel like better whenever i consume like higher quality meals too like um if i eat like pizza like all day i'm 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 crashing early that night like i feel like trash so i like and it doesn't stop me from eating pizza sometimes you need to you know load up on some you know greasy goodness but when I go out of my way to make sure I'm conscious about what I'm putting in, then it's not about like for me, and I'm not recommending this to anyone because I'm not a nutritional expert guy at all, but I'll go, I'll look at, you know, what looks like it was the most like what's been put together with the most love 
Like, I don't care about the macros and everything, but like, could someone's mom have put this together like this? Yeah. That if, if there's a love in it, it's going to make me feel good. <laughs> <kind of> thing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's no, be, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Though. That's that adds the touch. Yeah. It's like, a, it's almost like a mental piece of the puzzle. You know, I, like, I completely avoid fast food. Like I won't eat fast food. Yeah. Uh, like at you know McDonald's or Wendy's or anything like that. Like even if it's fish or something, a salad. Even I was good. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not about that. I'll like get a yeah. sandwich at Wawa or something. But I get to watch them make it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just weird. There was a time when like eating fast food was just the norm. The thing. Like, oh my god! In high school, dude, school. I used to just go out. Of, I used to skip out on class to go get some McDonald's. You know what I mean? You don't know anything yeah. back then. And your body, just, your body, you can just eat candy the whole day, and your body's just like, oh, I guess I'll just use this to make muscles somehow. And everyone just did that. Yeah. And like, no one thought anything of it. And it's just like, that worked. Like, we were eating fast food and then like working out after and doing just as good. And yeah. like, it didn't even make a difference, it seemed. And then, like, now, oh my God. Yeah. It's, I'm dude, getting old, man. Like, I eat one, like, piece of pizza and i feel like probably like dog crap like, yeah it's been like that with um alcohol with me too recently yeah i like i swear to god i have one i have two beers tonight i'll feel like crap tomorrow morning and it's like it's strange yeah like those things seem to like they either actually have more of an effect now when you're older mm -hmm. or it just seems like that like, yeah <laughs> for me it's been like big time yeah i feel like myself like i've stopped drinking unless it's like a special occasion like i'll drink on a special occasion but i feel like there's so many facets to it you're saving money if you're not going out and boozing on the weekends because there, there's there's better uses of your time you if you want to hang out with those friends you don't need to be drinking you know what i mean and if all they want to do is drink maybe now is not the healthiest time for you to be in their lives for you you yeah. know what I mean? So a lot of my friends that are still doing that, I'll wait till I'm better. I'm in a better situation as to hang out with them. Like, oh, snap, this band's coming to town. Let's go see them instead of going to the club this weekend and, you know, getting blackout drunk. Yeah. It's just, it's just a waste of time and money. And then I forget things. Yeah, it is, though. Like, especially like money. Oh, my God people like deplete their wallet every weekend yeah you know? it's like you you're living like luxuriously paycheck to paycheck because you yeah. want to go be a crazy alcoholic person it's it's just like, uh, that's enough alone for me to be like all right yeah that's not my <laughs> not my path not my bag baby <laughs> <laughs> that's cool though so what about the um have you been going on any like hikes and stuff like i know you used to just, <laughs> that's all you used to do man I was doing that before I came here. Yeah, that's no, awesome. really. Um, yes, like I still do that a lot. That's like probably my favorite hobby is literally just walking through the woods, like walking through nature. It's just the best. Um, but literally right before coming to do this, like I got to Reading super early, mm -hmm. and like. I hit all the old trails I used to walk on. I went. I went to Naldi Forest. Oh, went, today? Went, yeah. No way. Just for a little that's bit. That's awesome. Like I, no, that's I, I went cool. to Greens Mill, Naldi, and everything. Blue Marsh. That's super because cool, man. You say what you want about Reading. They have amazing parks. They have mm -hmm. amazing. There's some awesome nature around here. No doubt. My girlfriend actually loves going and running at Naldi. Like she just ran ten miles yesterday. And I was like, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever ran 10 miles in my life. I could, I could go the rest of my life without doing it. And I'll be just fine. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's so into that. But we actually went to um, uh, the Adirondacks last summer. And we hiked Mount Marcy, the mile high mountain up there. Like the highest peak in New York. And that was super fun. We actually Whoa. like stayed out and like we we like camped there for the night. And uh, I'll tell you a story. So we were we were putting together the plans to go. And um, my buddy Brendan, I don't think you ever met him, but you know Sam Deef, of course. Yeah. Um, so we ended up 
uh, asking other people if they wanted to join us because it was our first time going on like a crazy hike. And I'm like, eh, maybe we can offload some of the responsibilities and we don't have to buy all the gear that we're going to need because other people I know might have it kind of thing. So I reached out and I got my buddy Bren and my buddy Sam to come. And uh, like my girlfriend was like super into like watching all these YouTube videos of people that did it. And they're like talking about bears and stuff. And I said, bears, there's going to be bears out there. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well that's okay, but I'm going to definitely have my gun on me. And she's like, you can't do that. Cause the that Pennsylvania concealed carry thing doesn't work in New York. I'm like, I would way rather be arrested than dead. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to end up as bear. Poop. talking about bears. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not going to risk this. Yeah. So like, Bren had this water filter thing. <laughs> Sam was just funny the whole time. And um that's a shock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then like I I was the I was the machine gunner kind of role and you know. So we get up there. We're driving up there and uh we go to my friend Brennan's house cuz we're we all call each other like hey we're we're getting ready to go and we're going to carpool up. Brennan doesn't pick up his phone. We go to his house, knock on his neighbor's door, we found out later, no one picks up. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to shoot him a text. Let's all just go because we're running out of time. I think we'll figure this out. We'll just get a map there because he had a map because he had gone previously. And um, on the way up, I had like these like um, open wounds on my skin, right? And I'll get to what that was. Like I just had these like I had a, a skin infection that I didn't know I had. So we're going up. We're like halfway there. And then Sam's like, man, um, ever since like the other day at jujitsu, I've been having like these scabs pop up. And I'm like, dude, that's so weird. Same thing happened to me. So we do some Googling on the car ride yeah. the rest of the way up. And then we find out we have um, like this, like what's essentially like a staph infection that we got. Because one of the guys on our team got a staph infection at a competition, oh my brought it back to the God. gym, and then we got it. Wow. So we're up in the Adirondacks with a skin infection. I'm like, no, no, God, no. Like, I'm like, all right, well, dude, we're here. We're going to hike this mountain, and then I'm going to go to the doctor <laughs> after we're to get antibiotics. So, like, me and Sam had yeah. this the whole time. And, like, so we stopped at a CVS before we got to the campgrounds, right? we get every kind of like antibiotic ointment and everything that we could find. And like so much hand sanitizer and like every like time we like stopped and took a break, we'd like dress our wounds and like, it was just ridiculous. Like that whole process, but it was super fun. Like the whole thing, the getting up on those peaks was like incredible. Like I'd never been a mile high on a mountain. And I know like yeah. people say like when you have the elevation, like you run out of breath like quicker and stuff. I'd never experienced that before this time when I was up there. And I was like, dude, like every like every 10 minutes I needed a break. I'm like, dude, I'm like dead like right now because we, you know, we had our backpacks and stuff on us. I'm like, we should take a break right now. It was it was real. Like I'd never felt that before. And wow. then when you got to the peak, like it was like it felt like it was air conditioned. Like it was crazy. The temperature was that. Um different from the base of the mountain where we were actually camping out at night yeah but, yeah oh my you god you should come with us next time we go we're, we're planning on going on another one i'll hit you up you have a hammock still right i do nice yeah you have that no, one that's with, um you have the one with the mosquito net built in yeah yeah dude from when we were together yeah. back at the apartment i used the same one when we camped so the so about the bears though right so wait, wait, before I, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Before the bears, yeah. Speaking of those, I it just it reminded me of the time when we went camping in uh um the Appalachian Trail. Yes, and we took yes, yes. this here vehicle. Yes, we did take the bus. Uh we didn't sleep oh in here God. though. We just took it up because we wanted to go on a trip. I remember my my dumb butt left like food around. Yeah. And we're sleeping, and you just hear these like freaking foot stomps oh my god <laughs> that was like the scariest thing that's ever happened because <laughs> like just i was in a like... tent i was in a tent by like oh where we had the god. fireplace that we set up or like the fire pit and then you're out in a hammock just strung up like a yeah big candy bar for whatever was out there digging through yeah this stuff 
I remember telling you, like, yo, make sure, like, we're like, I'm going to go to bed now. Make sure, like, you handle whatever's going on over here. Nope. <laughs> and then you yeah, didn't I, do I it. The ball. <laughs> I remember oh hearing that. I'm like, all I right. Like such an ass. Yeah. Because, yeah, you just hear, like, I just heard, like, something big, you know? <laughs> like, something. It was, like, Sasquatch, just, like, foot stomps, slowly moving through leaves. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, my God yeah that was that was a good time though yeah no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a dumb dumb way to go about it but so what what ended up happening to us so we're at the um we're up there and it's our first night that we're camping out we hiked in and we're set it we set up our campground and they have um they have these like it's not like a cabin. It's like a cabin with an open face. Like if you had a cabin, it was, I think they're called lean twos. That's what they're called. And, um, so our friend Brennan was sleeping in there with Sam. I'm pretty sure. And then my girlfriend and I were out in the hammocks and like, so I have the Glock there and I'm like locked and loaded. Like I'm sleeping with it on my chest. Like if anyone gets touched by a bear, that bear's gonna be dinner for the next night kind of thing. Mm. Um, and it was a 40, so I would have had to dump a whole mag to take this thing down probably. But it was black bear, so these guys are smaller than like average bears. Um, but still, I know in, um, in a, I went to Alaska. This is kind of going off on a tangent. Yeah, but, I remember that. But yeah. up there, they carry 10 millimeter, which is really similar to um uh, 40 which is what my glock is and that's what they use to like combat the black bear like if they come in contact with them like that's their uh that's one of the calibers that like i guess is their like bare minimum and they no pun intended (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah they have black bear up there and uh, obviously grizzlies and all kinds of stuff and then they have that island up there called Kodiak, where the Kodiak bears are. And those are supposed to be like the OG top tier, rip your guts out bears. But uh, wow. yeah. So I so anyway, back to my story. So Sam and I, we rig up a bag like a. It's like we we had like food that we ate down by the creek, and uh, we we took any like food scraps. We had like crackers, whatever was left over. And we threw them, like, in the water and, like, you know, whatever was going to eat it could eat it. And then we took all the trash that had, you know, whatever le- other residue was left into a bag. And we, we hiked up way past our um, campsite and we hung it on a tree with some 550 cord, right? So then um, that night, the bears attacked the shit out of that freaking bag of food. And then, like, they they threw the stuff everywhere. And that was, like, above our campground. So the bears had to get down somehow. And they went, like, beeline straight through our stuff. So you could just hear them coming through. And, like, I remember, like, my girlfriend being like, Brad, the bears are here. Like, she's whispering, like, Brad, Brad, the bears, there's bears. I'm like, all right. Where they at? (laughs) (laughs) And I see them. I'm like, all right, just let them go. You're ready to go. They're just just moving. They're just moving through. Like, they, they don't want to have trouble. And, um, so it was cool. Like, you know, like the adrenaline was up. It's like, all right, we're, we're safe. And then I go back to bed. So the next day, uh, we go up and, um, they, uh, the bears start coming down again. Like, so, well, that, the next day we, we wake up, me and Sam see the, all the stuff's everywhere and we're like, damn it. Like that was a dumb move. And like, we had to clean up all the trash and stuff. Um, but the bears like completely trashed all this stuff just to like lick out the whatever residue, uh, the peanut butter and stuff. It was funny. Um, so like we, we did a different thing with the food this night and we had it like farther away in like this bear can thing that we got. And then we, um, we took, uh, we took like a, we took a, like a big log and put it over that and it was way further from the camp this time so if the bears tried to get in there they couldn't and they did yeah. but that night the bears came again and like that was the day that we went to the peak so I'm trash beat by the time like I get back to the hammock I'm like I just want to lay down and like sleep right now like 
whatever happens. Don't like this is what I told them. I'm like, don't wake me up unless you want me to kill it. Like for real. <laughs> like, I don't like don't wake yeah. me up if there's a bear. Unless you want me to kill it, don't wake me up. So the bear comes again and like I'm having a hard ass time sleeping. I don't think I slept at all that night. Like I'm constantly like tossing and turning in my hammock for some reason. Wonder I just why. couldn't sleep. Couldn't imagine. Yeah. I get wrecked by a bear claw. Yeah. So they're like, oh man, there's another bear. And the bear like goes up and like is patting at uh Brennan's like backpack. And he's like, get out of here, bear. And the bear runs away because they're like black bear. And I guess they're they avoid confrontation. But the whole time I'm just like, I'm just super pissed in my hammock that I can't sleep. And I'm like, leave me alone. I don't care about the bear. If you want me to shoot it, tell me then. That's all I care about. Like, I, I just want to sleep because I'm so beat from the whole day of hiking. Like we hit that peak yeah. and then we hit um Mount Gray, which is supposed to be the one that has the best view. And um, if you want to see that view, you can look on my girlfriend's Instagram because she has all the pictures. And it was very, it was actually a very, very nice view. It is surprisingly exhausting hiking. Mm -hmm. Like you, you think you're just walking, but like, especially when you get to those high elevations, it like beats you up. No doubt. It's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I'd never known about that before that that was like a thing. Like everyone always says like, oh man, training and elevation is like the way to go. Like that's going to make you better when you're on the ground, like for cardio. I'm like, I don't like, I, I, I'm just a terrible runner in general. I hate running. So I never, yeah. I never went out of my way to try to discover that. And it's, it's real. It's the real deal. Speaking of climbing, I, I saw Free Solo recently. Oh, dude, I need to see it. I promised my girlfriend I'd watch it. I, for her. you, especially as a climber. Yeah. Oh my God. It was like amazing. Yeah. Like just the documentary of it was done really well. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just amazing. Like when you, you watch the footage of him doing it and like climbing that full peak. And it's just like the magnitude of that accomplishment is just unreal. Yeah. And like I was watching it, I was like I'm about to cry. I'm like, oh my! It's like yeah. this is like such a yeah. Feat, it's you know? so beautiful. Four to see hours of manifest just precision. precision. Yeah. Focus. It's just I can't even imagine. Yeah. Just handling your adrenaline perfectly. In yes. That situation, just being centered right. for four hours right. and harnessing that. That that is beautiful. <laughs> like Alex Honnold is is really like like a pinnacle athlete like what people should aim for like i know he says a lot of the time like hey, i'm not the best climber out there at all whatsoever um but he is his mental is something people should aspire to in any any yeah. sport like it's it was inspiring yeah i i definitely need to see it i'll, I'll let you know when i yeah. see it i will text you um, yeah i because i know you get a lot out of it yeah because um you are like really in the climbing. Yeah. I actually, I, I messed was. my wrist up recently. So I've been out of climbing for like the better part of half a year, unfortunately, but I still get out there every now and then I try to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I getting old, man. It's for the birds. This whole getting old thing. Yeah. It's like, it's like a reality, but if you like accept it, it's not that bad. Yeah. It's like, all right, like just own it, you know, I feel like, you, you know, you're meant to do, Certain things at certain ages, I guess. Yeah. Like, I know it's like my my days of heavy weightlifting are behind me. It's just, it was meant to be when it was, when yeah. I was 18, mm -hmm. not now. So, like. I feel yeah. like li like lifting the way I like to lift, that's something that you can do well into your, like, late, like, life span. Like, I feel like when you're in your 50s, you can still lift weights consistently and still see gains you know what i mean oh yeah like I, there's plenty of people that yeah, do it. you know what i mean um i feel like that's maybe like when i'll start focusing on it more like i lift to kind of supplement what i'm doing and I've, I've been like that for like almost since as far back as i can remember like when i was doing parkour like i'd want to do squats a lot because i want to get bigger legs so i can jump further i wanted bigger jumps i wanted to be able to absorb landings better um, and then like now with jujitsu, like I do a lot of just, um, 
burnout stuff just because it's like, you know, you're constantly pulling on people and what you want to be able to do in jujitsu when you're competing is you want to make sure that last bit of fuel in the tank lasts the whole time. Mm-hmm. So I like to do like supersets where like, or like iron marathons and stuff. Yeah. I like to do that. Cause yeah. that, just, that brings out that part of your mental. It's like, all right, we got a little bit more to go here. Keep yes. grinding, you know, it's like, there's still that little bit of extra juice, you know, it's there. Yeah. It's kind of funny because I've been I've been like that now in uh, yoga, mm-hmm. like and especially meditation. Like recently, I've just been really drawn to like. Like, can I go a little deeper into that awareness? Like, can I? can I stay in this position a little longer? And like, that's been the thing that I feel like so drawn to do as opposed to like, can I put that 10 more pounds on the bar? Yeah. It's just kind of been like, I've shifted, I yeah. guess. So like the, the, the motivation to improve is still there, but you're exactly you're, you're putting it somewhere it's else. It's in a different yeah. way. It's, it's more internal yeah. than external. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. It's hard to it's hard to show off yoga stuff versus like weightlifting stuff. That's like you can't peacock it as well to people. And I feel like that's why a lot of guys like don't like the idea of doing it as much because they think it's girly. But (laughs) I've done like I've done yoga with my girlfriend so many times, and I die. It's it's uh it's it's really good. Like I think uh, it helps with jujitsu a lot too, which has been like one of the main athletic focus is a mine lately um just with like the submission arena stuff and everything which there's another one coming up soon i don't remember when exactly oh, but in nice. june yeah so i'm still doing that and um yeah i just uh, i kind of found cool. a passion for that just because uh getting out of the military you lose that you lose that brotherhood that you have with a lot of the guys that are kind of sure. like have that sharp edge of like the killer instinct and with a yeah you know the fun conversations about bull crap but in jujitsu like that's like such a, it was such a natural move for me once i got into a good gym um and started to hang out with the guys and it, like the banter is great and i need that in my life mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it was a natural progression yeah no, there, there's a part of me too. I think you know this. It's kind of like military esque. Like I get very like into things, mm-hmm. but so I know regimented for sure. Yeah, but I know like would never be the right move to join the army. It's just yeah. not me. Mm-hmm. But like, I even felt like when we were in the climbing, it felt like militaristic. You know, yeah. it was like we got a freaking mission yeah and that's what was cool about <laughs> we got it. a mission and like that's kind of how i feel as a teacher right now that's so good it's like i'm in there and i'm like i'm gonna teach the crap out of this to you kids mm. you know like you i can't fake that either man like when you oh, have that like you have to hold on to it like that's why yeah, you gotta cherish why, that yeah like and... whenever i have those emotions about something like even musically like i haven't been picking up my guitar as much lately but i had like a spurt like a couple weeks back where i was like oh man i'm like like i wrote a new song and i just was like on it i was on it sharp just you know letting everything come to me i'll i'll show you it then it's a pretty dope thing i still want to put together like an album but i just haven't had the time money or energy yeah. to do it so we'll see we'll see what happens yeah Oh God! Have you been writing I, a lot? I've been I yeah. binged I binged your album for the last two weeks <laughs> ever since I reached out to you for this interview. Well, that's an interesting story too. Yeah. So, um, with that, I this was right after I had that engineering job I talked about before, and was in there for like two and a half months, and was like, "Who am yeah. I kidding?" And this then isn't me. Yeah. I I left that job. And um, the first two things I did was reach out to the nursing home and say, like, I'll be your music program guy. And then I reached out to Nick Shaw and said, all right, so I got this big masterpiece album I wrote back in college. I wanted to have it done for real. (laughs) Like, you know, I got one life to live. I'm making this happen. 
if never again, that's fine, but I'm doing this one. And that was like the story with that. Mm -hmm. I was like, cause that was, um, that particular like bunch of songs. It was kind of like, I wrote all those songs in such a like disturbed place in my life. Yeah, dude, <laughs> like, that's the best time to get I, the best quality, man. No part of me was trying to write that. Yeah, is what I mean. Like, it was my last year in college. It was my fifth year in college because I had to take an extra year. All of my friends who I was in college with the whole time graduated. So I'm just there for a final year in limbo in a major that I don't care about, mm -hmm. about to go into the real world to do a job I don't want to do. Um, and I was in love with this girl who wasn't in love. Well, yeah. And you mix all this stuff together. I was a freaking Wreck. nut. Yeah. <laughs> like I was just not. That was a low year, you know. It was prime, prime emotional state to write a beautiful album. Yeah, which is what that is, and that's what happened because over the course of that year, all those songs were written at that time. Yeah, and it was literally all like that darkness was put together, dude. That the yeah. artistry and a lot of those songs, like I think my favorite song off the album, besides the ones that I'm in, uh, <laughs> is uh, "Path Set Fire." That song is so good. I love oh, yeah. that song. What's that one about? Well, that like, one in what, particular yeah. was like, I was watching a video, Terrence McKenna, mm -hmm. and he was talking about um, how it's like really like the state of humanity is in such a low place. And he was saying um the artists will be the one to save the soul of humanity or nobody will. And like, I heard that and like, I really believe that I really do. Like, I really think like if it's not through art, I don't know what it will be through. Mm. And that was the inspiration. When I wrote that song. It was like, um, like it, it really is like the artistic vision of things that, it's the only thing that can really like show people a different way and mm -hmm. make a change and like maybe try to help people to like get along better and just live in a better world. So that, that song was about that. And there's like the one part in there. It's even that, that part's quoted that that is Terrence McKenna. Mm -hmm. who I, but I think when he was talking about it, he quoted someone else. And I forgot who it was, but yeah, that's yeah. cool. Like you, passing down the knowledge that influenced you yeah yeah that but... song's super dark and just ominous it just feels it it's like the one song that makes me um slow down what i'm doing like when i'm when i'm driving <laughs> listening to it i'm like all right let's let's use off the gas so the engine's a little more quiet so i can hear this a little better kind of thing uh, it's a good song man i, I really really like that song it it moves Thank me you. in a way like it's hard to it's this is awesome thing about art is like it's something you can't quantify you no. can't calculate art it's absolutely yeah yeah it, there's no rhyme or reason mm -hmm. there's no formula and most of the time any song i ever wrote i didn't try to write it it just freaking happened mm -hmm. and it's like it's the only way i could describe it it's like there's no formula. There's no, it was like, like something else kind of like, it was like a channeling process. And that's really all it was. It's yeah. like the complete opposite of like, like engineering and like yeah. teaching like logistics and math and stuff. Yeah. It's weird. It's, it's the one way that you can express and vent out those negative emotions too. Yeah. In a healthy way. Yeah in a healthy way is like a huge part of that too. Yeah. But overall like that, uh, those bunch of songs I wrote to me kind of felt like, like a peak in a way, like there was yeah. a bunch of songs I wrote before that. And it kind of like led to this like culmination. And then that period, it was just like, wow there's 26 songs in a year yeah and like once it was all like together 
I kind of just like kept it in my closet like I did with everything else for mm-hmm. like years and years. And then years later, and then I met you and then, you know, we start the climbing. Mm-hmm. And, um, I still yeah. think like to this day, the, 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 maybe not the most like, maybe not like the best creativity I had at the time, but like it was so easy to write at that time with you like working with you and like Matt and Gary. Yeah. It was so easy because we all just meshed so well. And I really took that for granted because it's so hard to find people that work with you musically like Mm -hmm. that easily. It's insane how easily we wrote like those masterpieces, like emotions, like I know so big, so big and so good. I know. Yeah. And it was, it was like, it was like, we weren't trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You didn't need to. That's cool. When that happens, it really is. It really is. Yeah, like I, I have to try now to like bring stuff up. And a lot of times it's not the best. Um, there have been some really cool songs that I've written lately, though. Like even in the band that I'm in with Gideon now, like we wrote uh, a song about the Speckled Hen. Like that's really cool. It's I think it's it's really the only. It's the best happy song I've ever written by far. Like, and I don't like, it's so much harder to write happy music <laughs> yeah, than it is to write sad music. You know oh what I mean? Oh my God. Happy? Lyrics? Like, how, <laughs> how? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you do that? Um, but yeah, that's, that's crazy. Have you written anything yeah. since? Are you going to put a follow-up album out there? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't plan on it. Like I have... I've written so many things since then Mm -hmm. and I made like a little YouTube channel of just the song for now Mm -hmm. because like really for me like the like writing music has always kind of been it's almost kind of been this thing I do that just like reflects the life I'm living Mm -hmm. it's so weird so like it's always kind of been something that's like not on show for me it's like it's just kind of reflecting everything I'm going through in my life. Yeah. Um, so I haven't really thought about like, like doing anything professionally with it all since that one. Mm-hmm. I kind of at the moment I feel like it's like that's like a one and done thing. Mm-hmm. Like here's the probably the best batch I ever wrote. Mm-hmm. That's done for real. The rest of it, it always felt so good and pure to just do it, like as like a hobby it mm-hmm. it always felt kind of like sacred to me yeah. like it's this one thing in life that is just like sacred or something mm-hmm. so probably not but then again like as life goes on you just never know so like yeah. i could see like one day just like hey screw it mm-hmm. let's record a bunch of things yeah um but i've really been like like when i kind of went in that direction away from being in a rock band which like i felt so strongly to want to be in a rock band for a while yeah obviously when we were working together in in the band um i remember even when i first moved to reading i was reading anthony kytis's biography and i'm reading it and i'm this is like right before i met you yeah like i'm working my like engineering job and it's just like You know, I'm going to that job and I'm coming home and just like doing nothing. And I'm reading this book and I'm reading about like all of his experiences being in a rock band. And I'm just like, what am I doing with my life? (laughs) You know, (laughs) why are you doing this? I'm missing out. (laughs) And I swear, I swear to God, no joke, like a week later is when we met. I swear to God. Insane. Um, And then that whole thing happened. But then like, I think really um, like what I always really uh, got out of music was this more like healing aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And that's like, since the climbing, I've just gone full into using music like therapeutically for people. And it's weird because like lugging my keyboard into the nursing home is like so polar opposite of like, putting on a rock show Mm -hmm. um but it's just weird for me like it gives me like it fills me with something that like feel it feels like like this is what i'm meant to be doing with this stuff 
mm-hmm. more so like yeah it's weird like i and even when you said like in the car you heard that song it made you slow down yeah i think a lot of times like the kind of music i write is like it seems to come from a place of like slowing down and healing and reflecting not like getting up and rocking out Mm -hmm. and i think i've just kind of opened myself to that part of it and um yeah you don't miss that ever there's times (laughs) (laughs) there's times when i'm in the car and i hear a good stone temple pilot song and i'm envisioning myself as scott wyland on stage like freaking yeah like that is freaking fun yeah and there's there's times when like like i do miss that a little bit yeah like the just the feeling of like like being on a stage and making an impact with music yeah yeah that's always an awesome thing um yeah like the, the, <laughs> the performance aspect of it i feel like performing is always fun it's it's so i think it's it's what like there, there's so many different kinds of musicians too and i feel like i am a performer in so many ways and like being able to express myself through music is like the rawest way that i can do it well and i feel like better than a guitarist or a singer or anything else I am a great performer. Yeah. Like I am fun on stage. And that like I I could draw people into that, I think, pretty well. Like I I I've never had a gig since I've been good like since I've actually been like booked in a real band. Like obviously when you first start your trash. Um, but I've never had a gig since, you know, I've been an established musician where i've like gone and like there's people not having a good time at the bar yeah i I have not had that since then right because i want people to have fun and it's easy to emote myself on people and let myself out and then people want to be a part of that like yeah i that's like people are drawn to that yeah yeah i think I, i i get um i really like being in the role of a teacher now Mm -hmm. of like you feel like you're performing in some in a way you kind of are because the focus is (laughs) on on you yeah it is and it's like it's kind of like like you're like the main character in the room Mm -hmm. and they all look up to you and wait for your instruction and you kind of are you're kind of on stage um i try to always make it as real as possible yeah and like deviate from it looking like a show but it always kind of does feel like that and it's kind of like um like you're on a stage performing while also developing and guiding and helping the youth Mm -hmm. and like that is a cool thing it's less of like here's this awesome thing i did and then everyone listens it's like collaborative Mm-hmm. which i like yeah yeah I, I i can't think of many people better suited to lead the youth than you man like you kids need you man like you you make the time for them too like it's it's such an imperative piece of the puzzle yeah i thank you yeah they need good they need uh They just, they need like adults who are going to listen to them Mm -hmm. and like actually take the time, Mm -hmm. not just show up to get their paycheck. Yeah. (laughs) Well, like that, that's a lot of the thing, the the part of it. I remember like if I think of the bad teachers I've had, it's, you know, they're, they're, they're there and they don't give respect as much as they just want all the respect. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, all right, everyone in here do this. You know, like I don't, how, you can't learn that you're an equal that way. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's obviously on the kid to be, you know, the student, like you would need to know your role in, you know, at at one end of the spectrum, but at the same time, you need to want to respect the person that's teaching you. You know what I mean? If I don't respect you, I'm not going to listen to you. Right. 
and there's like the emotional intelligence is the most important part mm -hmm. and that's something like research has shown this too mm -hmm. if the emotional intelligence is there with the person learning then they can easily learn like analytically and everything you're trying to teach them but before that like if, yeah. if if you don't have that like emotional connection first like you're just gonna be like hitting your head against the wall yeah and i saw that happen a lot with a lot of, of teachers like yeah way more experienced than me like better than me at doing this mm -hmm. but like if that time wasn't taken at first to actually like to know the student and to like to just be like a real person first wasn't gonna go well yeah <laughs> i saw some pretty nasty stuff yeah this i year. remember like in, in like when you first like get to the class and like when you're first starting like a lot of teachers will try that thing where like all right everyone introduce yourself like say your name and then say something interesting about yourself and stuff and like that's where it ended like the teacher didn't give a shit about you after that right you know that was the one day yeah of like, all right cool i care about you yeah all right now i gotta drop yeah 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 I, I, that's such a there needs to be a real connection way more importantly than there needs to be that semblance of like look you're an individual yeah yeah but the struggle for me is like and i i experienced this like as a musician too i think mm -hmm. just like like you doubt yourself like that's my problem mm -hmm. like i'll just like sometimes like i'll get in the room and it's like all right period starts and i'm just like oh, what do i do <laughs> you know? i'm like do i even know what i'm doing no mm. crap like that always happens to me just you doubt yourself and then yeah you know, it's like oh my god do i even have what it takes to do this do i even have what it takes to teach these kids um but then like the more time that goes by it seems to me like you're like i'm usually more on point than i think and it's usually like like, dude, if, if you're like trying and you're like giving your all every day, that's all anybody wants to see. Mm -hmm. And that's like that goes further with like kids, too, because it's like they don't want to see a robot. Yeah. Because then that makes them feel weird. It's yeah. like now I got to perform perfectly for this like perfect teacher. So. Yeah, I, I'm one of those people like. I'm so like unprofessional. <laughs> yeah. So like I'll be in there and I'm just like, oh my god. I'm laid back. Like, am I am I seriously a freaking teacher? You know, and, like that's like <laughs> what it, happened. That's kind of what it looks like and what it feels like. But at the same time, that works. Cause like your response from kids who are unsure of themselves and unsure of their abilities, their response to that will usually be better. Mm -hmm. Cause they're like, okay, this guy won't like judge me, you know? Yeah. So I have a question about I remember you were lined you were lining yourself up to go teach in Africa. Yes. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Cause I like I'm I have questions <laughs> about that. Oh my god. Yeah, because yeah. I remember the last time I completely time, forgot about yeah, that. The yeah. The last time I saw you in person was like Mm -hmm. you, like you you announced that you had applied for that like yep. i think you made a post on facebook and you never post on facebook so i was like oh my god <laughs> he's gonna go like be an amazing like influence on the yeah. world like if i post on facebook yeah it's something for real mm -hmm. uh, yeah 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 i remember that and like we went to like uh your, your buddy was having like a, a show there was like an outdoor show in levittown and we mm -hmm. went to and we we're just chatting about it um so tell me what happened yeah here's what happened um so first year teaching i taught at the alternative school mm -hmm. and really loved it really it felt like all right this is this is what i'm meant to be doing right now definitely so like i really got on that path um but it didn't feel like 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 that kind of environment it was like this it felt like it was meant to be like a one-time thing mm -hmm. and like staff and students it was pretty like it almost seemed like it was known yeah it's like all right this guy's here this is awesome but it probably won't because it almost felt like a prison in there yeah it just wasn't like the best thing yeah so 
right around the end of that year, I'm kind of like freaking out. I'm like, what do I do next? Yeah. Like, what do I, I don't even know. Like, piece. um, but I really just thought like, I just want to do what I'm doing here outside of America. Like I, I just, I felt like it was time for like a pilgrimage. A big, I felt like it, yeah, I feel like it was time for like life. a big step. Like, I want to go to another country and like just um, kind of get immersed. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking of that and then it kind of clicked in my brain. Well, what about the Peace Corps? Mm -hmm. So I thought about it, talked to my folks about it. Um, and again, there was that part of me that was like very like wanting to serve. But I knew it's like military wouldn't be right. Mm -hmm. What about the Peace Corps? So it seemed like the best fit. So I went ahead and applied and I told the school I was working at, like, this yeah. is what I'm thinking of doing. Um, and they were like pretty excited about it. And like, yeah. I told the kids and everything and like, it kind of pumped them up. Cause they're like, all right, that's awesome. Yeah. This guy just showed up in the school and now he's going to Africa. Like, yeah, go you. It was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, but I applied and got accepted. So I was all set to teach math in Ghana for two years. Um, meantime, while that was in the process, I'm now thinking, all right, well, if I do this, my departure date would be in June of this year. What am I going to do in the meantime? I don't just want to be a bum. Um, so I'm thinking like, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? So I just started like, you know, I was thinking like I could just be like a sub somewhere, tutor, mm -hmm. whatever. And then about a week before the school year started, this school in Chester reached out to me because I put my resume on this website called PA Reap for teachers. And I just I just put my resume on there and the their coordinator reached out to me Um and was like, hey, uh, you know, there's a vacancy for a math teacher position. Any interest? And right before this happened, I was doing a squat and herniated a disc in my back. <laughs> so keep that in mind, too. Mm. Like, literally a week before I read this email, I was in so much pain, I couldn't even move. Uh, and I'm just sitting in my bed all day. What were you day. squatting? What, were you, what was the weight? 135. Oh, man. Warm it up. I you was fucked it yeah. up while he was warming up. What, what were you doing? I literally had. Pistol squatting that damn thing. No, oh, dude. It was, it was like the one squat too many. Oh, and it just man. freaking went. So my back goes. I'm out for the count for like a week. Like just laying in bed trying to move. And then the week after that, I'm finally starting to walk again. That was when I read this email mm -hmm. and I replied to him and I said, so here's what's going on. I have an application in for the Peace Corps. If that's the case, I leave in June. So I don't think I could be the teacher. Is there any way I could be a sub? I'm downstairs rehabbing my back with a freaking heating pad on my back. And this guy calls me right after I sent the email <laughs> and he basically tells me um, we're actually willing to work around that and hire you as a math associate, which is basically a support position for the math teachers. So you're not a sub, you're not a teacher, you're kind of in between. Like you basically hang out in the math classrooms and just help the kids with math, but you're not like in charge, but you're there to support. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it was just, like that sounds totally freaking perfect, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I went and interviewed there for the job. Um, and keep in mind, three days before this, I couldn't even sit at all. Yeah. And like literally like right in time to go like sit in a chair and interview, I went and did this interview and it was cool. I freaking drove up to the school and listened to Lateralis the whole way. Mm, that's awesome. And like, like I was in like such a weird state of mind, you know, I'm like, all right, interview. Cool. Like it was so like last thing on my mind. Um, so I just went interviewed. It went really well. I was just like, just told them about, I think that, you know, 
I was just real and whatever. Um, and then I got a call a couple days later and they said, yeah, we're going to, we're going to hire you as the math teaching associate. And it was, it's full time. It's pretty good pay. I was like, dang, Sweet. awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, but again, the whole goal, the whole thing at this point was like, this is literally just what I'm doing in the meantime before Africa. Mm -hmm. At this point, my head is completely already there. in Africa. Yeah. I'm like, all right, that's what I'm doing. That's where I'm going. So, but I, I get to this school and uh, I was just kind of taken away with the place and like the energy of it just like sucked me in and it was amazing and I really loved it. And then yeah. like the school year starts and it's like, I'm just having a great time. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not worried about like keeping my job because I'm already leaving. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I was like totally open with the kids and like, they like, they loved it. Like we just clicked and like, I started making relationships with the, with the kids and stuff. Um, and then we get to about November and a couple things happen all at the same time. One, I get an email from the Peace Corps saying that their medical department is recommending me not to clear because of past medical history for um back when i was 20 i had my little episode and had time in a mental hospital for 10 days that apparently was enough for them to say yeah we're not going to medically clear you um so that was like a punch in the gut you know crazy man because like i'm kind of thinking like all right well that was a rough time i overcame it look at what i'm doing now isn't that a positive yeah like ha but... haven't i pre like <laughs> haven't i redeemed myself like apparently in their eyes not the case and they they just read the discharge summary and thought whatever they thought and they're like yeah we don't that's not we can't clear that and then right after this happened, the teacher that I was supporting walked in and told me that she was quitting. And things were not going well with her and the kids and everything. And so she's just like, yeah, like I resigned. I quit. Um, so like this all happened in one week. And then the school went ahead and looked to hire another teacher. But in the meantime, they told me, all right, well, I guess we got like a week or two here where we don't uh, we like, I guess you'll just be the teacher, you know, for, for like the week or two, we still have a vacancy. I'm like, all right, great. So I did like the other stuff. Did you I was mention doing. to them that the Africa thing fell apart? I didn't at that time. Cause I still didn't know. And I put in a, in a, I put an appeal in on their decision. Mm -hmm. So I'm still like, if they accept me, I'm going to go. Um, so I still didn't know and I didn't tell them that. So I taught everything for a week and it was like the best week ever. It was just mm -hmm. awesome. Like we just clicked. Yeah. Like I did this like roller coaster project with the kids. They loved it. Oh, it was... you love roller coasters, dude. Yeah. You yeah. used to play roller yeah. coaster tycoon. I love roller coasters and they like they fed off that enthusiasm. But it was just a week of like. And they were all like, oh, why can't you just be our teacher? Yeah. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's and awesome. it, it really was like that, though. Because it's like, I was such like the unassuming guy in the situation. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ah, you know, I'm here, but I'm not really here. So, don't, you know, yeah. I'm just, we're just here chilling. Um, and then the school hired another teacher. They hired her. It was all set to go. And then she had a freak accident and ended up in the hospital and told the school that she couldn't teach for the year. And when that happened, I looked at like everything and I was like, okay, I think like the world is telling me something here. That's like, crazy. I don't think I'm meant to go to Africa. I think I'm meant to be here. And I, I, I emailed the, the like heads of the school. And I was just like, so being in this crazy situation, um, I want to let you know my situation with the Peace Corps is not going so well. It looks like they're probably going to deny me. 
that being said, I would gladly step up and be the teacher. <laughs> and like you didn't tell them why. I would know. No, I just yeah. I just said they were I just said the Peace Corps process was not going well and they were denying me for something that um that I thought was stupid, but mm -hmm. that that's what it was. Um and got an email right back and they're like, All right, great you're the teacher <laughs> <laughs> and that's really what it was because they were just pumped with what they saw me do and everything and just like my attitude i guess so they're just like all right you got it so that's that was like the story with that and what eventually did end up happening i did appeal the peace corps decision but the appeal still got turned down so mm -hmm. I, I got rejected anyway i got rejected yeah. by the peace corps <laughs> it was it, their loss man I tell you what, it sucked. Like yeah. that part of it, I was like, really, <laughs> really. But the way everything happened, it was like, all right, clearly that was meant to be. Mm -hmm. So, like at this point, I'm totally happy because, mm -hmm. like, I think I'm definitely meant to be like doing what I'm doing in Chester right now. Yeah. So, I, I think probably the need is higher in those like cities in america too than even in africa probably like the kids I'm because people now, that like think they're gonna be uh, an impact they want to go like oh where's the most desperate place i can think of yeah and they'll go to all these other countries yeah. and might actually be more needed in america mm -hmm. in these places where like these kids don't even have a dad or a mom yeah it's just, they live in like poverty and so that was that story yeah, it's so nutshell, crazy it was... how relativity works with that too. Because, like, you can have these kids that are growing up in like third world countries, and they're just happy to have clean drinking water when that's a thing. You know yeah. what I mean? And then you have all these kids in America where you know, with relativity, all they're wearing is you know some Skechers and whatever their big brother gave them, and all these other kids have nice shoes and stuff and iPhones and everything. Mm -hmm. Like I know I grew up poor. I didn't. There was kids with cell phones in high school when I was, like, right when I was a freshman, like, everyone had a phone. I'm like, I don't even, like, not only can I not afford that, like, or want it, it's like, I'm a kid, like, why yeah. do you, like, I don't need that. Like, I have a house phone, just call my house phone. Right, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, let's just go do stuff that we don't need cell phones for. Just innocent times, I feel like people are trying to rush into adopting a lot of this stuff that they don't need to when those kids in poverty really i feel like some of some of the best people i know had really rough upbringings because they just have been there they know what it's like to be at the bottom and they see that now that they have like a job and they're not in poverty anymore you know what i mean those are the yeah. humblest people in my experience and that's powerful stuff to know man yeah no, and those people, uh, if they have the right influence young, yeah, they can go far. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, yeah, like if 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 they have somebody that kind of like just helps to nudge them a little bit and like mm -hmm. remove those boulders they just, off their yeah, shoulders, they just need that they one already, light or that, that's surrounded by all the darkness. Yeah. They just need the light. Like, they target, already the have the resilience. Something. They already have all the work ethic from mm -hmm. their up from what they grew up with. So mm -hmm. then it's like, man, they can do amazing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You do any coaching? Um. Not really. Yeah. I actually, when I was there, um, I kind I assisted with uh, flag football. Mm -hmm. So I was like out there, um, and it was a lot of fun. But I actually thought after doing it, like, I don't think like being like the sports coach is like the, what I'm supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. I did actually. Me and the uh, guidance counselor started a. A mindfulness program with kids mm -hmm. which has been pretty cool because that's like a mindfulness program like mindfulness meditation yeah yeah because that's no, like I... my bread and butter no doubt and it's like dude they need that so bad because you there's so much trauma mm -hmm. and everything that's something like i want to expand upon that big time like doing that in the schools and stuff 
yeah that's cool Definitely, yeah. that's so cool that they're giving you the leeway to pursue the stuff that you belong doing man that's yes. i'm really happy to hear that yeah I that have... they're, they're doing that it sounds like you're in the right <sighs> place right yeah. now man grateful to be in a school that does allow you to do these things because you probably couldn't in a public school it's too regimented you couldn't in an alternative school because it's just too crazy mm -hmm. <laughs> um it does seem like um it's an environment where they're just looking for like like what can we do that will work you know yeah Man, I'm like, yeah. I'm so proud of you, man. <laughs> it seems like you've come such a long way. Like, you're in such a good position. You're not being a bub. Oh, it's uh, so, yeah, I'm so happy to hear that because there's, thank you. There's so yeah. many people that are, yeah. that have gifts like you that I know, and they're just not doing what they could be doing. Well, you know what it was, though? Um,. It really was, like, the game changer for me is when I left the last engineering job. Mm -hmm. And that was when I was, like, like, screw what everyone wants me to be. Because, like, I'm, I'm just, I'm not spending this lifetime just, like, wasting all these things I'm good at and gifts. Yeah. To just make my family pat me on the back. I'm just not doing it and it was for like in that same mindset it's like like if i'm here once with these specific gifts and these specific talents like i want to freaking really find the places where they're best going to be used and like really try to do it right instead of just like letting it all go to waste yeah and just you know be in that place where i don't feel like i'm really maximizing my potential but i'm making more money and yeah. whatever or whatever it is yeah and even with the money like i remember you were making pretty good money even though you hated the job and stuff <laughs> and you you paid a good portion of your loans off is the teaching yeah. job giving you enough money to make ends meet in that yeah. respect yeah it that's is that's awesome yeah. to hear and it's like so you it, almost paid off with your loans i know you were you had a lot of them like, honestly Penn state's expensive man <laughs> dude mine were bad but pff, not even close to some friends I have. Some, mm -hmm. I have some friends who are like a hundred thousand in debt. Like I'm like halfway there. Mm -hmm. Like paying them off. Mm -hmm. You're halfway done. That's awesome. It hasn't yeah. been too bad. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing sucked. you like, can't it, handle. Yeah, it's kind of like that endless tunnel feeling. Yeah. But I'm so used to that. It's, I think uh. I think every millennial is used to that feeling yeah. of just this endless tunnel of paying. <laughs> So. Ah, that's amazing. And this tunnel. Dead. But, um, I mean, yeah, it was a decrease, like, but it definitely, like, does what I need. Yeah. Yeah, the school I was at before was not. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was, like, that could not sustain you for life. There's no way. The it, alternative like, school. And it's yeah. crazy, because you would think, like, that's the one that would pay the better amount, no. because it's such a more it's, harsh it's environment. It's the harder job. Yeah. But they pay, like, crap. Like, yeah. So, like, you have the teachers that'll work for anything, that don't really care, that mm -hmm. are going to go to work there, that aren't going to make an impact. That is such a... Yes. Yeah. It's very... Such a terrible cycle. It's very backwards. Yeah. But I think it's because, like, education today is kind of backwards like that, where all the money goes to the better schools, not the ones that really need it. Mm -hmm. And um, it is kind of backwards. So, the, yeah, those teachers that will put up with the worst situations get paid the worst, too. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wait a minute, shouldn't it be the other way? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's weird. Yeah, man, that's... It's just a failure of the American systems all over again, man. Yeah, I mean that—that's a whole debate in itself. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Uh, nothing, nothing. I'm <laughs> nothing. I have enough experience in to even start a conversation about. I don't even know, man. So the folks are good and everything, man. When are yeah. we? Going, when are we going to Six Flags with Joe? Whenever you guys do.
I still have, um, me and Ethan still have the year memberships. Alright, man, we're in there. Free parking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How, is is the stream go. going well? Is everything going? I think the audio just cut out at some point again. It's the third time it happened. That sucks. <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> How much time are we in? Yeah, I don't know 50, what it, 50 minutes. What it is if like the computer can't handle it or if the sound device is disconnecting or it's probably just you're because you're using this default streaming app or whatever YouTube provides. It's, yeah. It's probably janky. <laughs> that jank. Technical issues. Always. Can never get How do you know that. when it comes back? You just see it on there that it's picking up audio again? Uh, well, I had to restart the stream you... and then it would show up again. Oh, did you restart it a second ago? Yeah. Well, no. Does it all I restarted it. The same? Does it all go into the same video, though? No. No, so I'll just have to re-upload everything? Yeah, it's pretty okay. much a mess. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Uh, so do you, you want to do that again? Well, how, how long have we been here? It's 2.46. We've been, we've been on... An hour and minutes. 41 minutes. All right. <laughs> well, let's, let's restart. Like, at, at least, like, the footage is in there. Thank God yeah. for backups. <laughs> we'll just uh, yeah. we'll, so we can I can just upload that whole thing that you have on there. Like I can just re-upload that. Yeah. See, I'm learning. I'm still learning this whole process. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's cut this out really quick. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, oh God, that's such a good thumbnail. Going live. All right. Well, you know what? All things considered, this didn't go that bad uh, as far as technicalities. Like, it <laughs> crashed a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. We're back again. How many times do we have to? How many times did we restart the stream? Uh, well, this is the fourth one. The fourth one. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. It's all an right. endless stream. <laughs> That's okay. We'll just uh, I'll uh, I'll remove all these parts and then we will have a finished, good to go one off the camera. Which will be easier, and then I'll p pull the audio off of that. So, is there any, anything else you want to chat about, man? I'm trying to think. Um. So, like athletics. Hmm. You're just a yoga guy now. Music. You just play for old people now. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so cool, though. And, uh, and your family's good. Yeah. That's good. Definitely, man. uh, man. The um. Yoga and Reiki has been big in my life. Yeah. So are like, you still do practicing Reiki? I know like yeah. that was like a big thing back but when like, we were together. It's kind of similar to like songwriting in my life where it's kind of this thing that is like, it's just like part of my life. Like I don't have a clinic or anything. I haven't like actually like made any career with it. Mm-hmm. But it's just literally, like, shaped how my life has been. <laughs> mm. Like, just, like, following the principles of it and, like, practicing it has opened the doors for a lot of things in my life. Mm -hmm. That's um, awesome. Yeah, and it's just, it's made me, like, a more patient person and more open person. More, like, loving. Yeah. Less afraid. Just centered, too. Yeah. I know, like, that That was, like, a huge thing. Just having you around, like, the the vibes. Like, I was so centered because of you. Like, I was so... I was so not quick to anger. Just being around you. Like, <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've always been a big believer that you are the average of the three people you spend the most time with. Yeah. And I feel like that's why, like, the growth mm -hmm. was so exponential in, in, in every aspect of the team that we had. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's really powerful. So, something we could talk about is Gary. Oh, How yeah. How that was, like, a... Like, the, the way that the band ended. Yeah. Um, so, we, uh, we were living in the bus, practically. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, uh, we, um... We're planning to build it out and turn it into a tour bus and then start making moves with that. And then, um, like, um, you got let go of the one job that you had. 
And then that was kind of like the downward spiral where we were like, oh, man, we're running out of time. Like, we have to figure out what we're going to do. And then you ended up needing to go. Yeah. Because we just ran out of resources. And it was like the same time where I'm just kind of like, rock bands, is that really... Like, that so much shift was happening at once. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I just... I just knew it wouldn't have been the best move. Yeah. Like, just at the time. It would have been, like... And it was weird, because that was the same time when all that stuff with my family was going on. What do you mean? Like, whoa, like, my grandma was really sick. Oh, yeah. Like, there was all these little things that seemed to be, like, hitting me at the same time, like you need to go home, you know? Mm-hmm. It was weird. Yeah, just the universe calling you, like, this isn't, th- your time yeah. is, is up here. You have more to do. Yeah. But then, with Gary into that mix. Yeah, I remember, that... I remember, like, we were, I, well, like, the, the band ended, and you had decided you were going to move back with your folks. And that's when we, that's like when I figured out I could line up that music video opportunity. And I'm like, look, this is like our last chance to make this a thing. Let's go to LA. Like I have a film crew out there that we can make this happen with. Yeah, it was the best. Uh, Definitely going to drop the link to that one in the description. (laughs) But uh, yeah, like I remember I called you up and we just went out there and that worked out. And then... You that had was... gone, and then you had made the low totem thing, and it was so funny. I guess the way the band ended was honestly, it wasn't like too shitty because I remember everything was just lining up. Like you, you could see it. It wasn't like a I'm breaking up with you and I cheated on you kind of thing that happens in a lot of relationships. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's more like. We see like this maybe is like this is this is a finite journey. Like we're not gonna be on this forever. Like some something is gonna happen here in the near future. Things aren't lining up perfectly to make the momentum of this go up. Like we are coming down. And we could feel that. Yes. It and was re- in all the the air. Yeah. yeah. And I remember <laughs> I was uh we were hosting open mic at All American and they cancelled the open mic and we were like oh man like that's like our final thing holding us together there yeah um and it was at that time that i met nick from scarlet moon and then i ended up joining and then i ended up just joining them i'm like well i'm kind of out of a band right now uh because you know we're pretty much breaking up kevin's leaving and uh gary was working like with his people uh, that he he was friends with and to doing like maybe a project with them, and I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm up for adoption. You yeah. Said if you want me, yeah, you can take me now. And it uh, was weird because that did, it all kind of like happened like that. Yeah, it didn't line up in a bad way at all. Like everything worked out, all things considered. <laughs> and I think in the end, like. Like, our whole story, even before the band, like, mm-hmm. it always felt to me like it was almost, it was more about our relationship, even, than the band. Yeah. Like, it was just this thing. Mm-hmm. The band came out of that. Yeah. You know, and it almost seemed like... like the friendship it, was just huge. Yeah. Like, a huge entity. Like, I remember, like, we were just able to do so much. Like, I remember, like, we yeah. just traveled to a lot of places doing a lot of things that weren't even music-related. Um, like we'd have band practice and then go lift yeah. and then go play frisbee after yeah. and then go for a hike yeah. and then I'd hang out with Gavin yeah. it was like it was it was like that yeah it was like you you were like it was like, we were like brothers like it was it was yeah. like it was I could say like just like having me you and Matt in the house like when we when mm-hmm. the band was like in its prime with all all of the members working together like the synergy between all, everyone was just amazing yeah like i could honestly like just yeah just the, the fun times. yeah the, the help that i got from you guys with with everything that i was doing too like especially with having gavin there and everything like i i could not i can't thank you guys enough for helping me and then like just putting this together making this dream a reality was it's like i like i can't you can't quantify all the pieces you know what I mean? There's no, 
there's no there's no duplicating what we had there like it's you can't replicate those circumstances ever it's not like there's no way like we have we have a really unique story there yeah i know no and it was like pretty magical yeah this time and then with gary like he uh he passed away <laughs> oh i don't know a year after the the band broke up was it about like it was crazy like the band had broken up and then a few months later he had like a stroke yeah he just and then he fell. was in a coma like no one i think to this day no one knows what happened he just yeah. fell and he, was, he, like he went into a coma though right that my yeah yeah my that's right and then uh i remember he came up he came out of the coma you told me that and that yeah that, that, like that weekend i'm like oh we got to go see him like that's crazy like i i'm like i can't believe he's he's awake like that, that's incredible i can't believe I remember I was saying like, man, this guy's fucking unkillable. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, he's it's just an unstoppable Tasmanian force. Devil yeah, he just dude. Doesn't he, go down. Yeah, he was what he was, man. And uh, he just he just wasn't the same. He just uh, he couldn't talk. It yeah. was just sad. But that I know, was pretty. We, young. Took, we took the instruments and played for mm -hmm. him. Like I remember, he was a little responsive. Yeah. To like, I could tell he, some part of him recognized us. Like there was definitely something there. Like. He was twitchy and stuff like. I th I think yeah you could see you know that. he he there was there was a conscious part of him but you know it, it, he was just mentally damaged you know what I mean mm -hmm. there was too much brain damage from whatever happened and then uh, I don't know how how long after that it took a before months yeah man. it was just sad man it was sad unexpected mm -hmm. weird like because yeah we like we spent so much time with him in his attic. Like, that was a huge part of the band, mm -hmm. was just going to his attic and, like, practicing. Mm -hmm. oh, I and, remember like, I was, remember we'd all just be shirtless because it was so hot yeah, in the summertime. Yeah. Like, dude, where's all the fans? Why don't you have more fans up here? God, I'm dying. Oh. Yeah, and he was always just, like, man. He was like in a tornado all the time. Yeah, man. Always total total Just chaos. Total chaos. And it was so fun because I feel like as a band we all complimented each other like in some way or another. If we didn't amplify another one of the person's strengths, we complimented one of their weaknesses. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just a perfectly layered cake. Right. Right. Like it was insane how we. There was a couple made times. Me and Gary were just there, and like. I would just be there, like, playing the piano, and he would just be like, like, oh, I needed that so bad. I just need to, like, calm down. Like, he would literally just listen to me play the piano, and he'd feel like, I just, it was kind of funny. Yeah. Because it was weird. It was like, we all kind of, like, did different things for each other. It was crazy. You know? the, the whole the whole dynamic of how the band came together is insane. Like it was. Like you were this random yeah. guy. Like I don't remember what I was doing at the time. I think I was a solo act. I think I had like my own like small gigs. You were you were doing around. stuff with open mics. Open mics. I was doing like all of them, just like learning the the lay of the land musically because I was finally getting some footing into being what you could call like a performing musician just not being a terrible musician like he's just being like your run-of-the-mill guy that says he plays guitar at a party kind of thing and uh just the way everything lined up was just perfect yeah yeah because i remember for a while like it was just us two yeah and like us two together were just like unstoppable we just freaking played practice and just we like showed up anywhere and played anytime mm -hmm. and that was just what it was yeah and then like you enter like matt and gary into that mix and for a while it was just like freaking fun yeah man. no like, dude i would not i would not change any of it for the <laughs> it world, was like man. such a weird cast of characters you know yeah oh my god yeah exactly like you have the, the <laughs> brolic yoga guy the the front man that's like an asshole the matt was like Matt was like the ladies man cuz he yeah. he was working at the Captain's Cove and he was just <laughs> he was just and then Gary's like this 50-year-old guy yeah. 
He has a Tasmanian devil on his drum. He's, he never stops talking. Yeah. Just, but he's like a, he was such a good drummer. Oh, dude. Like, when you think about it, playing with him, like, he was really good. He was so sharp. And on point and, mm-hmm. like, unique. Like, I think he took, like, the stuff we were doing to another level, to a degree. It was kind of cool. Is everything all right there? It dropped again? Yeah. Laptop's getting pretty hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty much out of combo anyway. Yeah, that's all right. You want to put the sticker up here? Yeah. Dude, there's some nice open real estate. Sticker. Some nice open Packs. real estate over here. The bus could use another one of these, huh? Boom. There we go. And that... That'll be about it on episode number one with Kevin hey. McGee. Thanks for coming out, man. Thanks for having me. Let's go get some food. Yeah, I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone who uh, made it out to watch this. Um, keep an eye out. We're going to have a lot more guests and uh, a whole lot less technical difficulties if I can help it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Sweet. That is it. You need like a Joe Rogan outro kind of thing. <laughs> 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 <laughs>